affecting an estimated one out of every two million people, fibrodysplasia ossificans progressiva, FOP, or Stone Man syndrome, is a rare condition in which one's muscles and other connective soft tissues eventually turn to bone, ultimately resulting in the person becoming encased in a prison of bone. The telltale signs of someone with the condition is a small big toe that is abnormally formed, often pointing at an odd angle. As the baby grows into a child, they typically will start developing very painful nodules around their back, head, neck, and shoulders, generally triggered when the babies or children fall or otherwise bump into something. These nodules will eventually turn to bone, but because this condition is so rare, the condition is misdiagnosed about 80% of the time. Generally, most doctors first think the nodules are cancerous and biopsies are usually performed, as well as radiation treatment and other surgeries, such as was the case with Ashley Kerpale, who is diagnosed with cancer and had her arm amputated at her shoulder when she was just three years old, even though she really just had FOP. Besides potential amputations when they weren't necessary, these surgeries will make the condition itself worse. FOP flare-ups are triggered by trauma to muscles. Even just tripping and falling, as kids do all the time, is sufficient to trigger a flare-up that will result in the development of bone on their muscles and connective tissues. In addition to muscle trauma, things like getting the common cold or flu can also cause flare-ups, and even if the condition is correctly diagnosed, there's little that can be done to help alleviate the problem as surgery is not an option and there is no cure as noted. As a person with FOP ages, slowly their ability to move is taken away from them, entombing a patient in a skeleton of heterotopic bone. Even seemingly minor things like preschool immunizations, injections for dental work, or minor bumps and bruises from falling off a bicycle can cause these children to lock up their jaw, lock up their joints that never move again, says Dr. Fred Kaplan, known as Uncle Fred within the FOP community, one of the few doctors working to find a cure for FOP. As he states, my lifelong goal since I've started working on FOP is not just to modify the symptoms, but to change the course of the disease, and eventually to stop it. In the extreme case, such as FOP sufferer Henry Eastblock, they lose the ability to move at all. In his final days, shortly before his 40th birthday, Henry's ability to move any part of himself was limited to moving his lips slightly, eyes, and tongue. But even before this happens, the condition can become extremely debilitating, even life-threatening. For instance, by the age of 17, Tiffany Linker from North Carolina had to start wearing an oxygen mask as extra bone developed around her rib cage, constricting her ability to expand her lungs. Tiffany was the first of now over 500 children and adults of the known 700 plus cases Dr. Kaplan has treated for FOP. Tiffany had previously undergone numerous surgeries and chemotherapy for what doctors suspected was a rare form of cancer. Finally, when no treatment worked, Tiffany's parents were told she'd be dead within two weeks. But of course, she didn't have cancer at all. She had FOP. Kaplan's work with Tiffany and others helped inspire him to dedicate his life to the eradication of this condition. As he said, I was watching a metamorphosis before my eyes. I was seeing a normal child turn into a child who was imprisoned in a second skeleton, literally imprisoned in this cage of bone. Of her condition, Tiffany stated in an interview in 2006, a flare-up can happen overnight while you're sleeping. Like you'll be walking around one day and you'll go to bed and the next day you won't be able to move. That's how fast it works. As to how it feels to have FOP, I would say, let me tie your arms to your sides where you can't move them and then put a neck brace and a back brace where you won't be able to move and then stay in a wheelchair all the time and then tell me how you feel. Sadly, a few years after this interview, Tiffany lost the ability to walk and on July 30th, 2012, passed away at the tragically young age of just 23. Many who suffer from FOP have to eventually make the decision as to whether to stay in a wheelchair at all times as their condition worsens so that they don't end up being locked in a straight-bodied position. However, in all of this, there is finally some hope for people with FOP. In 2006, Dr. Kaplan and his colleagues at the University of Pennsylvania School of Medicine discovered the gene that causes FOP, specifically a mutation in the ACVR1 ALK2 gene. Among other things, this gene helps control the development of bones and muscles, as well as the gradual replacement of certain cartilage with bone as you age. People with FOP have a mutation in one of two copies of this gene in each cell, one normal copy, one mutated copy. This results in the body repairing damaged fibrous tissue with bone. 
This discovery is not only a big deal for the few who suffer from FOP, but also because research into curing FOP may well end up helping those who suffer from osteoporosis, bone fractures, and other such similar conditions. While there is still no cure, this discovery has opened the door for possible cures or treatments of FOP, such as one developed by Dr. Joseph Kaplan, Dr. Eileen Shore, and Dr. Frederick Kaplan. They engineered an RNA molecule such that it would silence the mutated ACVR1 gene while leaving the properly working one in the cell alone. When the treatment is complete, it would leave the non-mutated gene to work normally, thus stopping the advancement of FOP. While still a long way from a cure, this method at least provides some hope for FOP patients. Further, in animal testing at least, this latter treatment has shown some promise with human trials now underway. Because this condition affects so few people, very little money is available for researching FOP and finding a cure, with a large percentage of the funds available raised by family members of those with FOP, of which there are only about 700 or so people diagnosed worldwide. Further, there are only about three principal doctors, support staff like doctoral students and the like working on finding a cure. As such, we thought we should mention if you'd like to donate to help find a cure for this debilitating condition, you can do so via donating link in the description below.